Hi and welcome to another episode of The Final Whistle, your number one sports podcast in Singapore. I'm Deepan. I'm Firdaus. Uh, Firdaus, well, after a long, long time, we've finally got a Causeway derby coming up this weekend. Uh, Singapore against Malaysia on March 26th, Saturday, before the Lions face Philippines three days later. Uh, one player that uh, has been a big part of the Lions squad for the last few years, and most recently the 2020 AFF Suzuki Cup, is of course today's guest. Uh, he, of course, scored in the last game against Malaysia, if you remember, a 1 0 victory, a good goal where he ran through and clipped it past. I think it was Fariza at the time. Uh, for us, go ahead and introduce him. Sure. He is one of the most skillful and exciting players in Singapore football in the past decade. He's someone who has won the league in both sides of the causeway, the Malaysian Super League in 2013 and last year, the Singapore Premier League with the Sailors. He was, of course, the 2019 SPL Player of the Year as well. Welcome to the show, Faris Ramli, man. How are you? Uh, hi, guys. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm good, I'm good. How about you guys? Very good, very good. Uh, yeah. We'll start off with, of course, the national team. Uh, some people m- might have been surprised looking at the squad list to realise that Faris uh, wasn't in the, in the list. Uh, I, of course, knew that uh, you were dealing with certain injuries and illness at the time. Uh, so tell tell the fans, you know, what's been happening with you over the last few weeks? Oh, it's, uh, I mean, like, it's quite a tough few weeks la, for me. I mean, like, I've been dealing with a lot of things, uh, especially, like you see, I think COVID uh, hit me during, after Charity Shield. Um, starting off uh, well with the preseason with the Lion City Sailors, I, I must say, I think I've, uh, me and the boys, uh, you know, had a very good preseason. Mm. I think the the progress was good in Lion City Sailors. I think maybe one of the best preseason that I had in my over my careers lah. So um, the progression is good and everything. You know, it follows your body well. Uh, that's how it is. And you know, we looking forward to the charity shield and all. After charity shield, then you know, uh, I was positive the next day. Then um, yeah, you know how illness is. The body starts to you know, shake and all. Like. Mm-hmm. Also, COVID oh. hit you quite hard. La. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. uh, I thought I was having like uh, small symptoms. Mm-hmm. But the symptoms, funny, it was funny. I think it came back, uh, not came back, I mean like it, it, it comes uh, like after four days. Mm. Yeah, the first two days was okay. I was positive. I was laughing and everything. <laughs> <laughs> then I was like, hey, there's no symptoms. Oh, that's good. And then suddenly, slowly, I, I felt like uh, my uh, cough, sneezing and everything. So, um, I don't know. Then you know, like I feel like uh, this is it lah. Mm-hmm. So just prepare. Ah. Then, then my <laughs> after that, my son all and my wife also get. Then oh, okay wow. lah. Then no need, to, no need to, no to isolate already lah. Then one full <laughs> house lah. Then <laughs> COVID house ah. <laughs> yeah lah. After yeah. that, you had to deal with uh, injury as well. Yes. Um. So straight away, I think uh one week later, uh, I came back. Uh, I, I was running, but uh breathing was quite uh hard wow. after COVID. Uh, I think. Most of the players that know uh, had COVID knows about this. I think it was hard to come back from COVID. You know the breathing, the the intensity of the training and all. So um yeah, so I came back and slowly, I don't know why, but uh my cough is still there. Uh I think I uh Harris got told me that he had COVID before and he said that the cough will be with you like you know uh for quite some time mm. like for a few weeks or even months lah. So yeah, then I just need to prepare myself lah. And uh, after this go by, then uh, the next game I was looking forward to Gelang. Gelang game, I think after the uh, I made I missed the first game against uh, Bel against Belestia, right? My mm. first <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forget. Then uh, Gelang. Mm-hmm. Eh, sorry, it's first game against Haugang. Haugang, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Team, sorry. Eh? <laughs> no, I was COVID. Then I was mm. like, okay, 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 against Haugang, I was mm. uh, then. The next day, the next game was Gilang. Mm. Then I was looking forward for it. Then you know, so, like I, I, I felt something on my uh, hemis, uh, hamstring and all. So dealing with it, uh, then slowly, uh, at Tampines Hub, uh, I think one tackle, two tackles at my ankle, and I got this injury, uh, plantar, you know, plantar fasciitis or something. Uh. So then it goes on from there, lah. The plantar is a very tricky injury uh, mm. is below your foot it's like a needling feeling like that and it can get worse if you don't take care properly lah. so yeah so I've been dealing with it uh, until now um, I need to make a decision before you know uh, two weeks ago against Rovers that uh, I was starting the game actually um, then it is hurting me badly uh, my performance and all so 
I just had to say to myself that eh, uh, if this continues, then you know, like I'm, uh, I'm being selfish, you know, to the team, because I'm not hundred percent fit and all. So I just take the decision to really uh, offload my foot, and you know, the coach also said that I think this is a very tricky and chronic injury, lah. So yeah, then I just take the rest, and I thought it was gonna be like okay after one week or something, but it gets tougher and tougher, lah. The the plantar is still there, and you know you're trying to train hard but still the plantar is still there it's it's kind of like someone poking your foot mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so you can't turn that much and even you know i can uh, i can perform well in training uh, i i scared that i'm looking like a a, a lazy person mm-hmm. like you know i actually i can't chase him but it, because of the pain but it looks like uh, i'm I did I didn't run or something so that kind of thing makes me want to like just you know want to treat it properly and just to offload everything lah before you can come back to hundred percent lah yes correct so so, so of course the the natural question uh, did you have discussions with uh, Coach Nazri before um, this squad was named I mean did you guys have any uh, discussion at all um no I think uh, Coach Nazri definitely I think he he knows about this injury um he you know definitely he will speak to the national physio uh, uh, uh visa mm. then um Kak visa will tell him everything lah because he's she's from Lion City Sailors also so uh, she knows about my injury and everything she update coach Nazri and also the manager and everything i think they know then i think he made the decision to you know try to give me uh recover properly to you know continue after the international week because we had a we had, will have a champions league game and everything lah. so yeah Uh, I think uh, maybe there's a blessing in these guys, you know, mm. uh, not getting called up for the national team. I think uh, just to you not know, rest this foot and try to recover properly and come back 100%. Hopefully in the next few weeks. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure Singapore football fans are all looking forward to your return. I mean, one of the more exciting players in the league, uh, as Fred was mentioned earlier. I uh, just want to go back now to the start of your football journey. Uh, how did you start playing football? Where did you pick up the sport from? Um, <laughs> way back, I think uh, it's th- it's quite funny like the story. Uh. Mm. I mean, like I started off from uh becoming a sprinter. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I was a sprinter. I was a hundred meter, two hundred meter sprinter. Then um, yeah, then my primary school coach, uh, Coach Zarin, you know, um, he saw he saw me running for the. Uh, what do you call it the the red house team uh, green like house sports team. day lah yeah sports day that oh. kind of that kind <laughs> <laughs> so basically uh, I think he saw me run and I think he needs a winger at the point time he was a soccer coach is yeah it? he was a soccer okay. coach for the, for my school for primary school then he just said that uh, hey uh, can you come uh, for training then I said like football lah then I was like oh okay okay then I was like okay can can uh, just kick the ball lah you know I also last time can see I only tonjo lah you know put poking the ball lah <laughs> if uh, you're tall lah so basically I just came to the training and just run with the ball and can you imagine like I was poking poking and when you want to cross I can even like you know shift my body to make to the to you know to the show straight line yeah the straight direction. <laughs> And crossing, you know, go one big, go one like half circle like that. And after that, I toe poke, then I cross. <laughs> so he was like, okay, that's a bit funny. But, you know, he needs a fast running at the winger. So, yeah, from there then, you know, I start to think back like, eh, hey, I think football also can run and also can kick. But, yeah lah, what people say about kaki bangku and all, like, mm-hmm. I, I scared lah. So, train lah. Then, from there, I think my late brother, uh, uh, he was the one that really pushes me uh, into this and... I think he wants to also play football, but I think he don't he doesn't make it, lah. You know, mm-hmm. but so definitely he is one of the my my brothers. All we like to play under Voidek, and he's one of the guy that tra- tells me that okay, if you want to have good techniques and all, you need to like juggle the ball. You know, you, you need to like aim every day, come down, make make practice. You know, uh, practice make perfect and all. So yeah, um, because of him, I think uh. I really pushes myself, uh, you know, try to, okay, uh, I go down at uh, one o'clock, then before five o'clock, I need to, you know, make 500, jug- uh, you know, juggling and mm-hmm. everything. So, yeah, I try to aim every time, you know, crossbar, uh, I mean, like, the the underboy deck, there's a, like, you know, the, 
the got one like a goal post thing lah. Mm-hmm. Then you just in the top corner. If I never hit the top corner, I cannot go back or something like that. Oh. Yeah, so that kind lah. So it's just a old school stuff lah. Yeah, I can say. Then slowly, I think uh, it hits me that uh, yeah, I want to play football. And seeing my younger brother, uh, Fuad Ramli, I think uh, some of you guys know. Um, you know, he's in sports school. He, I think he, among us, I think he's the first one to have that talent mm. in football. So he pursued it in sports school and all. Yeah, then, yeah, I've seen him grow and all. And then that also makes me want to, you know, be in that line lah. Uh, I want to be like, uh, I want to be at the same line with my brother. Yeah, seeing him at the football pitch like, uh, makes me like, eh, hey, he's happy. Then why not? You know, I try lah. So from there, then slowly pick it up football and try to train and everything. Yeah, that's the journey lah. Starting mm. starting off from so, there. So sorry, uh, tell me more about your family. You have uh, how many brothers? Um, with my late brother, I yeah. think I have six. Six brothers. Yes. Wow. So yeah. your your late brother, how old was he when he passed on? I was twenty one. And you, I, I assume you guys were very close. Um. Yeah. Can so, so he he was actually trying to be a footballer, or he was because he was at the age he was playing a lot of football, and then you were inspired by him. Um. So sorry again. What's the question? So was he playing football at that time? Uh, was he someone who was a big oh, football no, no, fan? He was a firefighter at that point. Time. Okay, but he played a lot of football on his own, lah. Uh, yes, he likes to play football on the void deck, mm. and you know, like sometimes when he's boring, he's like pulling his younger brothers to you know to come <laughs> along and play with him, everything. So yeah. Uh, definitely, I think he's one of the brother that uh I look up to. You know, he's very uh cheerful. He's very nice. Uh, you know, always protect his brother and everything. So that's good, lah. I mean, like uh, and you know, to not have him here right now, I feel like sometimes I just want. I wish he was here to see where I am right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, to do all these kind of things. Yeah, uh, it's because of him. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just, just of course, you know, for fans who might want to know what what happened to your to your brother, and also you talk about, uh, I have seen articles where you have talked about, you know, playing to make him proud, uh, mm-hmm. hoping that you know he he is watching you and all. Uh, how much or how big of an influence has is your family been in your football career? Uh, but first and foremost, you know what happened to to your brother? Yeah, I mean, he has a, uh, he had a motorcycle crash, um, accident, um. He was uh, riding his friend's bike. Mm. Uh, I think at the point time was quite a big bike. Uh, I forget what bike. Uh. Then uh, I think he's going for quite uh, uh, fast. And there's a band up front. I think uh, I'm not sure what's the story because there's a few stories. And mm-hmm. uh, we just heard that like, I think he didn't manage to stop in time or what for the band. Mm. So yeah, then I think he hit the curb or something. Then he flew off quite mm-hmm. a distance and... Yeah, from there I think you know everything happens after that. At the, at that time before your brother passed on, uh, did your brother know that you were pursuing a a football career? Oh no no no, not not at all. No no, I think. Uh, How old were you? Um, wow, I didn't even think about that. I think uh secondary one, so I was like thirteen. Yeah. yeah so at this at sec 13. one because in primary school you you joined the football CCA. Correct. Right? Correct. So but you were still not decided or correct. At that ambitions to be a footballer yet no 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 I, I think it was just uh, like I say I think uh, the the coach like he's just playing football you know and studies in Singapore you know how it is uh, you need to juggle your football and studies and at the point time I think he's still young to decide whether what you want to be mm. but definitely I think football is one of them and I just haven't get that right uh, right mind mindset and right thing to like really want to pursue to football uh, uh, for football at the point of time so yeah so uh, when when then did you decide that you wanted to be a footballer um i can say maybe during uh, when i was secondary three or four. Oh, uh, what happened then like what was it like do you have like a good tournament or did someone approach you um i can say it's just uh basically um i was having I mean, like, comparing me and uh, some of the students inside my school and all, like, um, you know, I, I knew that uh, my coach always... My coach was uh, Coach Kennedy, I think one of the referees, ah, if okay. you know. You right, know yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, he was back then, lah. Mm. so it's quite uh, quite long. So, he is the one that, you know, tell me that hey, you have the talent, you, you, you should you know pursue in football. But that's quite surprising because, I mean, he picked up the spot quite late, right? Yeah. And it's also because... 
he had a sprinting background and he he was talking about it right? like he told yeah. the ball <laughs> he had to go a circle to make a cross right. why do you think suddenly you were able to get to that level is in um i i know you're a humble guy but were you training yeah. very hard at that point of time to to get better at football definitely definitely i think uh i was really training uh it, my background was quite hard at the point time because uh i i like to go to street soccer court mm. you know here and there i was traveling like tampines woodlands uh, even uh see me you know everywhere but do then i just play with uh players there's unknown players out there that is really really good in street soccer but you know sometimes they just want to you know have fun and enjoy they don't they don't want to pursue that uh, uh football thing you know mm. in singapore um yeah so that kind of thing like makes me want to like really like hey these guys are good if i can show my skills and talent in street soccer court, why not you know i try to pursue this as a you know like football uh, footballing career as my football career career mm. so like i say then slowly then i was thinking like uh, my friends in uh, secondary school uh were studying you know re- have extra class then i was i i started from gelang So basically, I had you know sometimes tomorrow is exam or test, then one day before I have game or anything. So you know my cousin, my friends all in the same class, they saying like, hey tonight you know lah uh, let's study under void deck and all. But I was not there, so they were worried about me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like uh, saying to them, don't worry. Uh, after football, after this game, I will go back and study lah. Like, usually I will like, you know the sacrifices that I took. Uh, I will study at maybe around eleven a eleven p.m. twelve mm-hmm. a.m. Mm-hmm. Then sometimes my father asked me to sleep because tomorrow school and test and everything lah. But that's that's the path I took lah. Uh, you know, it's a risk ah. But still, in the back of my mind that uh, like, am I you know, am I going to pursue this as uh, my career? Uh, but still not yet lah. Uh, until there's a moment where I feel like, eh, hey, you know, uh, I prove a number of times, uh, and everything. Then until that NFA call up. I think when I was 16, I was playing for Gilang. Then I was called by by Coach Abdullah No and uh, Kagi. I think Abdullah No is in uh, Akaris Dead. Akaris Dead, uh. yeah. So at that point time, then I w- I I was with the big boys, the sports school boys. Mm-hmm. So I was like training with them, and this is how they they you know mention about morning they they wake up early, then they train, then after that they study in sports school and everything. So I was like, oh wow, I I miss that because I was in the normal. School mm. right there in the sports school. So, you so be- you were from which school? Ah, uh, Loyang Secondary School. Ah, uh, Loyang Secondary yeah, School. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I saw. Uh, I know I had friend. Uh, then I, uh, you know, gel up with them. Most of them are staying the sports school boys. Most of them are staying in the terminus. Then they like to come down to the street soccer court. So is this the Safwan batch or? No, no, no. I was the uh Sahil Shafigani batch. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So yeah, so you know, knowing all that, uh, basically, yeah, uh. uh lah they they told me about the soccer path lah mm, mm. they they all want to be a professional definitely you know from sports school yeah. so yeah then I uh, I will like yeah if I were to be in their shoes definitely I want to go lah then from there then you know I start serious definitely before that I already start you know, to know to train and everything just to be at the same level where they are you know they are like I I just knew that morning they wake up 7 a.m or even before that then they you no know, train in the field then they get breakfast and everything so. Then I was like, I know that I was lacking behind lah. So, uh, from there, then I tried to you know push myself more. Run, I like to run. Uh, beside the, beside the main road at my mm. house there. You mm. know, <laughs> this is funny. When I, whenever I see a bus, I saw that traffic light. Okay, the bus stop. I will stop. When the green light, I will try to sprint with the bus. <laughs> I will try to win the bus to the next bus stop. S- something like that. So mm-hmm. that is the 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 thing that I uh, I did last time to be. Where I am right now, so wonderful. Yeah, one one thing I have to ask. I mean, of course, when you when you went on to become a professional footballer, you you answered those uh, critics, and I still believe you're answering those critics at the moment. But I'm quite sure when you were young, there might have been people who said your size quite difficult to become a footballer. Is did that happen? And also, how did that make you feel at the time if it did happen? Um, yeah, I mean, like definitely that question I've heard. A number of times, mm. yeah. But uh, during my time when I was uh sixteen, seventeen, you know, uh, the S League was very, very tough. Mm. Like you say, I think people will say that, hey, how will you manage all this? Um, so I proved myself, uh, you know, to play in the in the Sunday League and all. 
I mean like I I were to be I join my friends, I join my uncles, you know, and wow, they were <laughs> they were rough as hell, man. I tell you, no, 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 mercy, no, 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 no. Things, eh? I, I think you guys know, man. I think <laughs> if uh, I think I heard about say as me say if can wear the uh, shin pad front and back, yeah. I think they I will use that lah. <laughs> but that is the thing, you know. Uh, during our time, my time, you know, uh, that kind when I'm gr- uh, growing up, these kind of people, even though you are you're a boy. And you pass them, they will give no mercy. One elbow at you mm. or one mm. one uh one kick at the shin, is is very tough. So, this kind of thing makes you want to hey you know, and you you need to show them that you know like even in the Sunday football league, I mean like, uh even if friendly or anywhere, you just want to show them that hey uh you know this guy can go somewhere, this guy can go somewhere. So yeah, I want to prove. So every time I I like to play with the big boys, play, uh, uncles and all the the tough one. So it will make me tougher, hmm? and yeah. it will prepare me for you know what's coming. And, and I know that I told you I I'm already prepared. Uh, my mindset, okay, let's go. Uh, let's try this path, you know. Um, then go to the prime league or even uh play in the prime league. Then call up to the young lions, you know. Um, having my first S league taste and looking at players like Alif Shafiin and all. So it's. You know the yeah. size. Prime example, Ali. Yeah, example. Yeah. Definitely, I think one of uh, me uh, moments that I I grew up. I think Arif Shahin is one of the the player that I uh, you know idolize. Uh, I see small guy, who he can really dribble man, and yeah. he can score goals. So that's the the player you know like this kind of player that have big heart. You know, will will run for the team, will score for the team, and everything will die for the team. So yeah. I uh, just want to move into your football career now, cause that's what yep. you mentioned, right? Uh, do you remember the date, July nineteen twenty ten? July nineteen twenty ten, twenty ten. I was my first S League games again. Home United, is it? You are correct about the first S League game, but uh, hey, wasn't uh, against Home United. It was against. Uh, oh no, that was my first goal. That uh, was the first goal. Yes, yes. Correct. which came ten days after. Ah, uh. uh w- Wait, wait, I played against. You came on right as a back. sub. Yeah, yeah. I was in. You the replaced young Shafiq Ghani. Correct, correct. I was in the young lions. I was playing the left, and I was, I had a good. Yeah, so so maybe this will this will jog Woodland your your memory. Woodlands Wellington is it? Who? Woodlands. Okay, correct. Woodlands. Yes. Woodlands. So <laughs> so it was written in the papers after your de- debut. Uh, this was the uh, the three lines. The Woodlands defenders <laughs> could not deal with Faris's trickery and at times had to resort to fouls to stop him in his tracks. With uh, Azlan Alipa even getting a yellow card for one nasty foul on Faris Ramli, <laughs> so like what you mentioned, right? I mean, at that time, you know, because you were so tricky and fast, people had to resort to fouls. I'm looking at the team list here. Um, uh, when you made your de- debut, uh, for Woodlands, No Ali was still playing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Sazali Saleh was still playing. So some of these names, and of course, uh, you of course made your debut for Young Lions team, which had plenty of at that time your your batchmates, right? So yeah. uh, you mentioned Shafiq Ghani earlier. Uh, in this young Lions team, it was Izwan, Madu, uh, Irwan, Safwan, Hafiz, Haris, wow. uh, and Isdin, and of course Lucas Savage. Uh, some people might remember him yeah. uh, from that man, time. I heard that name in a long time, man. Yeah, and, and <laughs> actually, when you scored your goal uh, ten days later, do you remember who gave you your who passed the ball to you? This oh. one might be hard, even for Faris. Wow. Um, okay, you either answer who you scored against. Or who assisted you? I scored against Lionel Lewis, right? Okay, that one easy to remember. Yeah, <laughs> I I, I mean, remember. <laughs> that's my first goal in Ashley. I remember that. I yeah. came out. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct. So what was th- that feeling like though? When you you know you, I just scored against Lionel Lewis, like Singapore's number one goalkeeper, yeah. man. That that, to be honest, uh, that motivates me. Uh, it shows. Uh, it shows that you know I can, uh, I can beat. Uh, at the bottom, number one goalkeeper and in South was, Asia. Yeah, I was mm. young, uh, and we I, I was playing the young lions, and you know a lot of things are uh, uh, at the back of my mind. But definitely the first thing is to win for the team, lah. It's not to score goals, but definitely if you want to win, you need to score goals. Mm. So at the bottom, I think it was one one. Is it? Uh, I think it's one one. Yeah. Then, then straight away I and it's my first start, right? Yeah, that was correct. my first yeah. start. Yeah, and I score and. And when I came off, I think Sufian Anwar scored the goal and the winner lah. So I was like devastated lah because you know, uh, yeah. yeah, I was like, <laughs> I thought this is this is something that I can remember lah. But uh, yeah, definitely I scored a goal. Yeah, but we lost. You know, at the end of the day, 
the team come first for me you know that's that's me uh, mm. the team will always come first uh, so when we lose i was really really angry and at the end of the day we can only do better from there on the yeah side. that's why i cannot remember who assisted him if they had what he would have remember to to But this it, day bro it's also hard lah <laughs> because of who it is okay let me guess lah let me guess let me guess it's not a singaporean i think it's not a singaporean yeah. i mean i i don't know i can confess i don't know who this player is but I, doesn't sound like a Singaporean name. <laughs> okay, then <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> hey, no, no. Uh, I suspect I, Korean. Yeah, it's Korean, lah. Uh, mm. I, I I don't Seo. remember. Co- it's Seo, is it? Yes, correct. His yeah. name is Seo Su Jong. Yes, it's okay, Seo. Okay. Okay. Hey, he's one of the when I went to Young Lions. Uh, I think one of the player that I saw is Seo. Is like, wow, this guy can. Is is a similar type, you know, as what I want to be, but he's a left legged, mm. and he was really really good. And yeah, was he from Super Eights? I mean, I might assume. I'm not too sure. Yeah, so I, I've sure never never heard of a yeah. Korean playing for Young Lions. Just want to move the conversation along. Yep. Okay. Um, your teammates at that time at, at Young Lions, you know, how fun was it to be with them at that time? And also, when you played for Young Lions, you were still in Poly, I assume. You were in TP. Uh. Or was it before? I was in TP, yes. You were in TP. Yeah, so yes. how how was it like playing with uh, your teammates at the time at Young Lions? Who uh, are was, many of them who are still your national team? Correct. Uh, correct. Uh, I was. Now. It was. I think definitely. You know, they they really you know welcome me to the team and all. So uh, it really easy to gel up. Um, uh, and I was you know the the youngest one. So I think you know just keep quiet and listen and just prove yourself time and time again. So definitely the senior players will just you know guide along, just listen and uh you know sh- uh see how you can help the team. So it was fun at the same time you know the bonding was there. I think it was quite strong. Uh, it's just you know some unlucky games, mm. a lot of un- unlucky games. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah, I think because of that, uh, I think I had uh I had a good time in Young Lions lah. Uh, the the first year then. It came to my first contract and all everything, yeah. So it make it's an easier uh, decision to sign for Young Lions at that point of time because of all these good things that happen uh, in the team. Then yeah, because I definitely I uh, like I said to you, I think after the goals and everything, that was just I was in NFA and I just got called up few times for from Sundram and Coach Terry, so. Yeah, then you know some clubs approach me and everything, but I willing I like to stay in Young Lions because I know the growth there, and you know growing up uh to be in the system uh it's not easy. Mm. Yeah, so uh there's an opportunity opportunity for me to be there. Uh, why not just you know try to make full use of it? Uh, before I move on to the next move in your career, I just wanna track back to 2012. Uh, when you went on to the top 52 of nike the challenge competition mm. first of all explain to people yeah. uh, what what this was at the point of time uh i myself don't know <laughs> 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 no, just kidding i mean like um back then i think uh i i love nike you know mm. uh, i love nike boots i love nike shoes nike stuff so definitely i think i've been waiting for my first nike contract so this nike the chance uh came up to me i mean not not came up to me i'm sorry uh They had a competition. Local qualifiers. Yes, la. they mm. had a competition. Um, every year, right? If I'm not wrong, mm. every year. So you know, looking uh forward to this competition, sometimes, you know, outsiders can just go on and play uh in the in the tournament and everything. But we are uh, in the club level, right? So, I'm not too sure if we can, you know, participate in this tournament. But I think one of the year, uh. As league like really you know like can push the elite player mm. to go to the most of the club can like there's two or three elite mm. player to play in the Nike the chance, so yeah. So, so what do you do? Is a skills contest or? Um yeah, it's a skill contest. Can say see your ability, you know, to dribble, to shoot accuracy and mm. everything lah. Yeah, to so see the points. They they follow by points and everything. So if you are the top, then you get in. So our I think I, uh, it's just a normal. Uh, D. Then suddenly, you know, the management, the young lions just ask me to just, hey, this this Nike the chance tournament. Then, uh, my name will be in, and whoever I forget the other one. Then we go in. Then I got I got the top top three or something at that point. The top five, I'm not wrong. In so, Singapore. Yeah, in Singapore. So after top five, then they will bring this top five to, 
uh, Southeast Asia. Oh, Southeast Asia first. Yep. Then yeah, uh, that's where I met Evan Dimas and all. Yeah, oh, he I, was also part of the competition. Yeah, he was oh, part okay. of the competition. Yeah. Evan Dimas and me, we were roommates. Uh, at back oh then. wow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, until now, I still teaching him English. Uh, Evan, <laughs> Evan. If you're listening now, I, I hope your English is better now. <laughs> so from Southeast Asia, then uh, you were selected to go to uh, Barcelona for. Yes. Uh. So Southeast Asia. Uh. Every I think. Uh. Thailand, Indonesia. Uh. Singapore and I think forget one more. So. Uh. Malaysia. Mm-hmm. So twenty of us. So five, 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 five. Then uh, they will choose the top four. Top four to go to the, to go to the Barcelona, mm. the 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 main event lah. So basically, we we went same thing, you know. We uh, go, uh, we go do this skill test and everything in KL, I think. Yeah. Then uh, after everything, then the top four they chose the top four and just nice. I think it's all Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore. Mm. <laughs> right, one each. <laughs> yeah, one each. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, then we, we go lah. We go to the Barcelona. Uh, we go to Barcelona and we did all the competition stuff. It was, and I can say that it, this plays a big part in my career because when we go to Barcelona, I think it was an eye-opener for me to see how good the young, younger boys, you know, in Europe was. Um, You know, they were like, 15 years old 16 and they were like they were like techni- technically gifted and everything you know size doesn't matter and you can really see hey this player that player will eventually go up you know to play in the nas- mm-hmm. national team one day yeah so it's really tough uh, I was 19 1920 back then so You know, playing with the younger boys, uh, they were hunger. Of course, I'm s- still young at the point time, but I thought I was young. Mm. I thought I was young, but <laughs> eventually they're seventeen, sixteen, fifteen. They were really good. <laughs> so that is an eye opener for me to really challenge myself. And you know, hey, this is no more street soccer, no more. You know, all this futsal thing, all throw side. This mm. is this this is the this real, is real thing. thing this is the real Anyone thing. Anyone that you saw in a uh, Barcelona uh, that. Went on to be a professional footballer. I don't. I honestly, I'm not good in remembering names, mm. but uh, faces, yes. So you know, I've seen this Belgian guy. Uh, uh, he, I think he, I saw him one time. Uh, in in the Belgium under something. Uh, so mm-hmm. I think like that. Eh, hey, this is the face. Eh, hey, I I play with you. You know, like oh. this is the guy. But I didn't know his name. I forget. So another guy, this young boy, uh, uh, I think Argentinian or something, mm-hmm. very small, but very good, very good. Ah, uh, it's like a messy thing, but I didn't see him anywhere now. Like mm. I don't know where he is. But but, but clearly, good. you talk about it being a an eye opener, and of course, you might have learned plenty of things there. Uh, but in my opinion, I think one uh, team that really, in a sense, was the birth of Farish Ramli in Singapore football. Uh, I think it was the Lions 12, right? 100%. I mean, it was 100%. So, Lions 12, at the end of the day, in Singapore football, is there's two camps, right? One camp who feel yeah. that um, Lions 12 destroyed like, local football a bit. And then there's other camp who who say that Lions 12 was the the time where Singapore football was alive. Uh, and Farish Ramli came from that Lions 12 team. Before you signed up for Lions 12 at that time, did you know what you were signing yourself up for? Did you know the history of of Malaysian Singapore football did your father tell you anything how do uh, you know to be honest yeah i don't know anything actually mm. like i said i think that wa- that came like uh, just right after my the chance nike the chance okay right after yeah, okay. right after so mm. nike the chance i remember uh, after that uh, i had the opportunity to stay in young lions then um i remember uh, coach radi uh, radi abramovich the ex uh, national coach then he told me that Uh, I'm in the plan for the Suzuki Cup 2012 so yeah definitely I'm excited about it then you know this one letter came and I think it's a bit sad lah I think it's the national service letter lah huh? oh the <laughs> dreaded letter <laughs> <laughs> so basically you know I told them uh, the, the this letter came and uh, I was young you know I was young so I said that uh, I want to be in the team so I, I, I thought I want to defer but Coach Radi said that uh, you are still young Uh, better to go in fast and go, come out fast and you can concentrate on your football career. So I was like, 
I was quite sad at that point of time because mm-hmm. I knew that, uh, like you see, I think uh, I came off uh, a, a good start uh, to be, you know, where I am right now. So, um, yeah, it's just quite sad that National Service interrupt a bit of that because that is the year that they won, they won Suzuki Cup. Yeah, man. Yeah. That yeah. cost you a trophy, yeah, man. But, <laughs> yeah, man. But, yeah. yeah, I think I was at the camp, I was at Tekong, like reading newspaper. I was like, Wow, they go semi final. Oh wow, oh oh wow, they go final. Oh wow. <laughs> then I was like, okay, okay. Oh wow. Then I'm not sad at all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you don't know where in the bank I was like, I just keeping quiet. Then everybody like, hey, why this guy like always read the newspaper and always start from the back. <laughs> <laughs> then I was like, oh, okay, only my buddy knows ah. So, yeah, I mean like by at the end of the day, I think Coach Radi is right. You know, to start off early and end off so you can concentrate on your football career if that's what you want to take in mm. uh, as a Singaporean. Uh. So, yeah, I think uh, straight after that, then, you know, 2012 also is the year that Coach Sundrum, uh, is, it's really, I don't know why, it just came off uh, just like that. I think our, my enlist day is like 31st October. Mm. On the 30th October, uh, I go cut my hair, buta and everything already and then prepare everything for tomorrow. Then suddenly, uh, I was at Suntec with my friend going and this together. At 4 p.m., I think Coach Sundram and Eugene, uh, the manager, called and asked to come to Jalan Besar. So at the bottom, I just finished Yang Lain. So, so yeah, then he said that um, the 2012th one, uh, so-called like I'm not ready for Lion's Shelf because they offered me a contract for 2012th Yang uh, Lion's Lion's Shelf. Mm. So I didn't know, like you see, I didn't know what is the project and everything all about. So I said that I think I knew myself that I wasn't ready, and I know that uh with young lions I think I can you know improve some more to be a better footballer, uh and I don't know what I'm signing up for back then lions shop, so when lions shop started I was like oh wow, <laughs> the fans you know everything was uh the like I think they finished second right yeah, lions shop, then that makes me want to be in lions shop you know I want to show what I have. So one day before I don't know why suddenly I they don't know that I'm going to end this tomorrow, and Coach Sundram called me and said that uh hey Faris come to Jalamsa. So when I went to Jalamsa, it's something like serious only I came. There's a contract for Lanshof. Uh, then I was like, you oh next year, oh okay. Then I was like, do you guys know tomorrow I end this? <laughs> because I vote out. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> then they were like, hey why you vote out? Then I said tomorrow, hey. Eh? Hey, you sign now. Then I say, hey, haven't you know? Even they haven't even talk about anything, contract and everything. Mm. So we talk, ah, we talk, we talk, we talk. Then I called my dad. It was right and then and then. Then sure, I talked to my dad and everything. I consult him and everything. So he said that okay, I think if this is the thing that you want to go, then go for it, ah. So straight away, I uh you know sign for land shop. Everything uh they give me everything what I wanted and everything. I sign for land shop. Yeah, I go in national service as a line shop player. <laughs> wow, yeah. and 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 what a decision, right? Because like I, like I said, uh, line shop has become a big part of your career since then. Uh, yeah, why do you think that was the case? Why do you think you were quite a success in line shop? Do you think it's because of the stage you were playing at? Because maybe for the first time in your career, you were playing in front of big crowds. A uh, big team. Was that the reason that you think you you rose to the occasion, or was it because I don't know you are you're familiar with the rest of your team? It's like essentially the whole team grew up together. Uh I think kind of both. Mm. You know, uh, looking back, uh, I didn't even like uh at that point I didn't even think like uh I want to be the top player. I want to be you know uh the best player or whatever. Mm. Cause I know I'm still learning and going. W- Looking at the team, you know, uh, there's Haris, there's Bayaki, there's Sharil. I uh, idolize Sharil at that point in time, so I was like saying, "Hey, this is the first time I'm playing with my, my idol, lah." So called mm. Then, and yeah, I think I learned a lot in the squad. Uh, and slowly it just rubs rubs on me, and you know, like uh, I know that every day I want to get better and better and better. So that is the only thing that is in my mind to help the team to be better as a footballer. And also to serve and as well, yeah. At which point in time did you realize that? Wait a minute, I'm actually an established player in the Lions Twelve team. Um, I think when, uh, when, twenty thirteen, twenty thirteen, I think, uh, ah yeah, twenty thirteen when we won, then when we going to the twenty fourteen season, 
uh, before that I think I had an offer from one of the Malaysia club. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was just talks, you know, and I was still young, but I didn't know what's going to happen and all. But at the end of the day, I think I stayed to Lions Shop, and yeah. Then now when I knew the club who that wanted to sign me, I was like, oh okay. And the club was actually Selangor. Mm. Yeah, but back then, like I say, I think I didn't know much about like this, and I was still young and all. So going to the 2014 season, I was, um, I was I think Coach Fandi was there. So Coach Fandi, you know, that makes me want to stay. You know, Coach Fandi wants to develop me, uh, you know, for the future and for for the international level and everything. So. It kind of just right for me to just stay, uh, to learn from him and everything, yeah. And yeah, he honestly, Coach Fandi, I think one of the coach that for me changes me from my mindset to take more responsibility to score goals rather than assist. So yeah, oh. that was yeah that was the change or uh, turnover for me. You know, back then I was just assisting, uh, not knowing that. I scored goals, you know. I, I yes, I scored goals, but I don't really count them. I don't really do this, but I just want, like I say, I think I focus more on the team. Mm. Yeah, I think yeah. as a fan, it's quite apparent to see that transformation in your game. I mean, not only you, like maybe other players as well in that team, like Sahil. Because I think if you guys don't have that killer instinct, that that drive to take risk, 2015 FA Cup wouldn't have happened, man. Yeah, mm. definitely, definitely. So, like I say, I think a, a lot, a lot of changes during that period, 2014, 2015. So yeah, it, it, it shaped up. Uh, myself to be uh, uh, a footballer that I am right now. So yeah, uh, whatever I went through, uh, I'm just happy that you know you went through like that. And also, it 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 drives me to take risks now and then, and also uh, outside of football. So you know, uh, to take risks in terms of uh, moving moving away from uh, from home and also, yeah, that. Like really drives me want to go further and further. Like I say, if for me, if you play a good game, you know that you can improve somewhere. So every game you can improve. The next game you can improve. The next game, even though people say that, hey, today is the best performance you had, you had lah. But don't buy into the hype. I I don't I don't really like really. Oh, is it? Is it? No, I just like. Ah uh, no, actually I did bad. But they they you know the fans you know they will just say the good things you know, but the. <laughs> The thing that I always hear from is always my, uh, my wife now, and also my dad, and also my brothers. Ah, they are just the ones that you know, like just give me the killer thing. Ah, like like, actually just now, one v one you can score, you never score. Stupid. <laughs> I like that kind. Mm, so mm. I was like, eh, hey, but I did well, what? You know, but people say I did well, <laughs> but they all like, yeah, you did well, but stupid, you can do more, you know. Ah, so mm. that kind of thing that makes me like. Yeah, actually, there's a lot to improve, you know. Yeah, even though you had your best game in your career or whatsoever, you know the next thing is you can improve in the next game. That will always be in uh, my mentality, you know, right until now. So whatever game, any game I play, I I I just want to improve the next game, the next game, the next game. That's all. That's where you can achieve greater heights, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and even in training also, yeah. And in your pursuit to to reach these greater heights, of course, even though you after uh, Lions of you went on to Home United. Uh, but after that, you went on to play overseas. Uh, your first overseas club was PKNS at that time. Um, no, what what inspired you to make that decision to go on to to Malaysia? Uh, but more importantly, why PKNS? I mean, were there other offers, and and what made you make that decision? Uh, behind the scenes of uh get me getting selected in PKNS, it was a a very a very tough journey. Mm. You know, uh. I had a good two years with Home United, 2016, yep. 2017. So you know, Coach Idi was there, uh, Coach Philip was there. Um, you know, and I know that. Uh, I think after two years in in the league, you know, we after Lions Shop, we were back in the league. I knew that somehow, <laughs> I just miss. Uh, you know, I want to go for greater heights, like I say. Then what else rather than to go to just you know your neighbor beside you, Malaysia. That was the first step, lah. And how, um, you know, after my honeymoon, <laughs> I straight away tell my wife that hey, after my honeymoon, uh, I don't know why, uh, there's a lot of agents calling me mm. when I was in London, 
Then I was like telling my wife that I'm sorry ah, uh, uh, I need to take this call, you know. Then I I call. Then sometimes I talk few. It can be few minutes, can be hours actually. So I was I pity my wife, but I told my wife, hey, you can go shop inside this way. <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> she can remember that. Just yeah, take anything yeah, you, you want. Take, you take. I I call this agent call. Uh, then she like she knew she supports me, but yeah, it's on our honeymoon, so. Mm. It's kind of uh, distracting, but uh, I happy that you know she supports me on in all this. She knows that, um, she knows that I want to go overseas, uh, to test myself, and this is an opportunity for me to go. So yeah, um, calls after calls after calls. Then back from London, back from Paris, everything. Uh, I had a trial at Malacca. Oh, okay. Yeah, so straight away, uh, I told my wife that. Yeah, it's okay. You can stay. Uh, I just drive to Malacca, and I told I told myself that yeah, hey, I think I need one more person to you know, uh, to follow me. And I think it was my good friend lah, Nabil Bagrib. No shout out, shout out to him. Um, he was there. Um, then he, you know, we drive to Malacca. You know, we he knows he follow Malaysia football. Then he know that eh, hey, Malacca wants you. Ah, no, it's just a trial. I say, but it's an open trial lah. So basically, I went there. Uh, then agent told me that okay, uh, this is uh my player, and after that, yeah, we went for trials uh, at that point of time. So the coach just want to see actually the trials is they just want to see whether you are fit and you are not injured. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> you you are not injured. Mm. Yeah. So that's the main thing, because I was saying like, hey, you know, some people say like, hey, why you need trial? Why you need trial? Uh, but at that point of time, I was still you know after. Lion Shaw and everything, you know, they know me, they mean they know me and everything. But at the end of the day, uh, I was thinking why why they want to have me on trial and everything. Mm. So they just want to, the the real reason that I I knew now is they just want to see whether you are fit and you are not injured. Because mostly like when after they sign, suddenly like the first few months or one one friendly you ACL or something. Mm. So that kind of thing, yeah. So so that's the main reason lah. Then uh, I went, then I scored. Two goals in Malacca, the in in the friendly, the coach was the coach can't wait to sign me. I still remember. Uh, then yeah, then after that, uh, things happened. Like uh, you know, the management already signed a few players in Malacca at that period, uh, that point of time. Then yeah, there goes my chance. Uh, I went back to Singapore. I said that I need to wait for results. So they have one more slot for me in Malacca. Then the coach called me. The coach said. Uh, told me that uh, I wanted to sign you badly but at the end of the day the management already signed another player without telling him so mm. I don't know how true it is uh. mm. then yeah then he said that don't worry I think you uh, we will see you in the near future and I say okay thank you so much for the chance and everything then after that the I know I just pray for good things uh. Uh, then I thought like okay I'm staying in Home United but at the end of the day You know, uh, coach Raja Gopal. That's where you know I think scouts saw at the friendly games, Malacca against uh, us. Uh, I forget we play against who. Sorry, I playing in Malacca. Then I playing against someone. Then I scored two goals, right? Mm, mm. Then the scouts there. Yeah. So one of the scouts is the PKNS scouts. Uh, ah. Okay. Yeah. So that's from there. Then coach Raja Gopal wants to speak to me. Uh, everything. Then again, trial again. So I was like, trial. He saw me then as a child. I think he just want to you know see me how I cope with things there in KL. It was a really like I said it was really a tough journey. At I came back, I called my friend again, hmm. <laughs> Nabil. Hey, can you follow me the next week? <laughs> Why? Ah, uh, Pekanes Lango wants to see me train. Huh? Then he said, then he said, don't lah. You know he said to me like don't lah. Malaka did this to you and everything. Then I was like. No lah, but you know, it was just unlucky with Malacca lah. Then I said that, ah, uh, that I thought there goes my chance, but there's an opening. So how about that? So I went to trial for Pekan Selangor. Then, yeah, Sriwe Coach Rajagopal saw me first training, second training, and the uh, game. Mm-hmm. Then he was just like, okay, ah, uh, you go back. Uh, and then after that, speak to Ifukal Club and everything lah. So I told Home United that about these things and everything lah. Yang we settle things and everything. So that's how, you know, we I went about to Pekanes Lango and it's a good moment in my career and I'm just happy that I took that risk. You enjoy yourself there? Yeah, definitely. Hmm. Definitely one of my best moments in my career. 
to play in Pekanis Selangor. The team was good, you know. Yeah, we were like the underdogs. Mm. But the names that was there, Safi Sali, Mahali Jasudi, yeah. you know, the foreigners, <laughs> Ramazotti. I was like, oh, yeah. hey, I played against you, man, Brunei. Then Ramazotti with me, you mm. know. So we talked in, in S-League, but so then we came back, we be friends and everything. So Zekas, you know, uh, Zach Anderson Zach was Anderson, there. Yeah. So yeah, he was in our gang. So I was like, hey, this team, like, you know, people like might want to think we are underdogs, but in friendly games, we won like 1-0 and we play quite good. So, I say that, okay, just, you know, keep up this fighting spirit and everything. So, just go along with it. And Coach Raja Gopal had his tactics well planned and everybody, like, you know, was shocked with Pekan Eslang. We, we, we finished third. Uh, we beat big clubs, few zero, three zero, four zeros, you know. So, yeah, uh, I'm just happy and that is how I think uh I went on uh you know they they have talking they are talking about like my first thing uh in Malaysia and all then you know after Lions Shop and as a foreigner how I'm doing there and everything so yeah that's the start of yeah that's the start of everything mm. uh, my 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 peak my career and everything then now still so there yeah and of course um one more club uh, two more clubs that you went to of course was uh Trengganu uh, and then one other episode happened at uh, Perlis, uh, which was after <laughs> I knew that uh, PK and then, uh, <laughs> I first, knew that's good. not not too tough a question. Don't worry. But after Perlis, of course, you found a place in Haugang United, and that was like a blessing in disguise because of oh, how that year yeah, went. Man. But before we get to Haugang, what happened with with Perlis, and what did you learn from that episode? Oh, before Perlis, I think you guys don't know this. Um, after PK and uh, Para offered me, mm. so you know, uh. They very they interested in me and everything, so they wanted to sign me and and like I say, you know I want more things, good things, greater, you know, achieve greater heights and everything. So, uh, my mind was set. Uh, okay, PKNS is just a you know underdog, small mm. clubs and everything. So the fans fan base was quite small, but then you know to be playing there and to be playing in the state. So Pera offered me and I was like, oh Pera, this it was a big club and state. Um. A big state that so state club and everything so I just tell myself that hey this is a new challenge you know yes it's a, in Malaysia so but it's a new challenge definitely I would love to take and I told my agent let's go let's go for it yeah and then we deal everything already I about to go there like uh, two days before uh, they want to sign me on Thursday I still remember so um, on Wednesday morning uh, me and my wife and my friends we uh, they like to follow me to the uh, to Perak to see me sign my you know my second year contract in Malaysia so we went to Johor to have staycation then after that the next day on Thursday itself then we will dri- drive off lah so we, on Wednesday we went in just check in uh, when I about to check in at 2 plus then suddenly this news come off uh, come out that uh, because everybody was talking about me signing, you know, you know how Malaysia is. Yeah. Uh, the news came out fast and everything, you know, the rumors and also, I was saying like, hey, you know, I getting DMs here and there, here and there, like, hey, Faris, are you coming? Why are you coming? Hey, I know you're gonna sign. Please tell me, please tell me, <laughs> please tell me. So I was like, hey, hello, I was excited lah. Say, this is how state is. Hey, my followers like from, you know, from small become big. Then I was like, mm. hey, this is how it is ah. This mm. is a turnover la. And so, yeah. Then I was excited. Then suddenly I check in. Then after that they want, to, they want to go out to have lunch and all. Then I suddenly I read this news and I was like, eh. Then after that this uh they say in Malay like the kaba angin or Faris Ramli is not true. Then I was like, eh. Then I was like, then I tell my agent, eh. I thought tomorrow I'm signing with Perak lah. Then he the my agent uh, uh said that, eh, what's happening, man? Then uh okay, never mind. I find, uh, get to the bottom of this and everything lah. So he called Perak and all, then had a fight and everything lah. So it was ugly. Lah. Then. Yeah, straight away after that, uh, uh, again, I was saying like, okay, it's okay. Then suddenly, Safi Sali called me. Safi Sali called me, yeah. Then after that, hey, what happened, you know? Then I just, not call, I think message, sorry. Hmm. Then we had a chat and everything. So, I saw police. Then I say like, hey, what did I say? Yeah, I think Safi Sali was all there, you know, some, some, uh, my PKNS players, mostly is there. Can you mind me and everything, all there. So I was like, eh, Perlis is a, is a, is a new club or what? Then I was like, then they're trying to start up 
um, start back, you know, uh, Paris to be where they are last time. Mm. So it was quite a journey. Paris was far, <laughs> but I went to just KL lah to mm. just sign the contract. And you know, after everything, blah blah blah, the guy uh, told me that you know, uh, they want to bring Paris to where they are last time and everything. So yeah, I talked to Safi, but once I reached there, the changing room, everything was. Was I don't know ah. Uh, Not was, what you thought you would be. Yeah, like. yeah, man. Uh, it was terrible, man. Mm. Uh, the the there's one there's two buffed up, but the door was open like the door. Uh, there's no door. Mm. The toilet there's no door. Then we shower. Ah, I see. We pee there. We shower there. Everything there. Then they say yeah. Then we change our uh, training kit all at the side of the road. Then I say what's happening here, man. Then I say uh this 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 place there. I was like, what have I got? I gotten into ah. Uh? Then I was like. Straight away, uh, I think I remember. Uh, Harris called me. Then Harris say, "Hey, you sign for police?" Then I say that, e- "Yeah." Then after that, he said that. Uh, but uh, at that point time when he called me already, it was already three days because you already the, signed already. I already signed. So three days into the into the team, everything happened and yeah. Uh, I haven't get my uh apartment. I haven't get my car. I haven't get everything lah. So I told them that. Uh, they asked me to use my own money to, uh, you know, uh, stay in the hotel and all. Then I say my wife and son is there, so the third day my my wife my son is sick, so I was like he's still in the hotel. Then I say like, eh, uh, I need to bring them back ah. Then I focus in Paris ah. So about to I told them that eh, uh, I'm going back to send my wife and kid first. When I come back, hopefully my apartment is ready. You know, my 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 car is ready and everything. Then he oh okay can 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 you go back first the coach also say you go back first then I go back lah after I go back and do it Harris call me lah that that's why I say to Harris like oh I sign lah and everything but it doesn't seem like yeah like this one lah like a, a good a good club lah mm. and at one time lah everything was messy lah so straight Harris say like okay just be careful you know anything he is there to advise me lah so um I straight call my agent and I told my agent that if they I I won't come back. You don't. They don't give me an apartment because I'm using my own money and everything. They will reimbu- reimburse me the money everything after <laughs> I get my apartment. Mm. They say this is too long. They ask me to uh, pay using my money in hotel until end of the month at that point of time. So oh. it was seventeen <laughs> days. Then I was like seventeen days ah. Ah, oh, you know hotel. Okay, okay. Then I was like, uh, then I had to think, 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 think. I told the coach, uh, I can. I can't go back until you give me an apartment and also they want to do a jersey launch and everything. So I told them, they are smart lah. They are smart. They want to do jersey launch and everything. Then if I'm there, I'm already there. Yeah. So I straight away say that okay, if you don't give me by Monday, you know that that was weekend. If you don't give my Monday or Tuesday, I think we my agent and me had a discussion and all. We just want to terminate the contract and everything. If you don't terminate, then it will get it will get ugly and all lah mm, everything lah. Mm. So. We had we had uh, our thing lah, me and my agent. So we managed to discuss everything. So, yeah, the at the end of the day, I think they can't give me what I wanted and all. And it's a blessing, this guys. Like you say, I think yeah, I I even even Safi, you know, I talk to them and I say that hey, you guys still want to stay there? They say, don't worry, you know. They said that they will they will give the <laughs> they will, the first month salary haven't give. Then the second month salary haven't give. Then they say they promise. Oh, the third month they will give all three together something like that. So I I came at the third month lah. So I said, oh, my month they will give all of you your three months salary and everyone. Then my first month salary you see they will give lah. I say I don't buy this shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> this bullshit. Mm-hmm. I say. Mm-hmm. Then I straight away tell them that uh, 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 be careful guys, be careful, just be careful. Uh, then you say where you guys signing? Oh, I I'm signing in Singapore lah. I say it's okay. I think it's too late. Uh, Uh, for me to go anywhere because all signed really at that point of time, so yeah, I told Safi and everything good luck and everything. Just uh, hopefully everything goes well, but it turned out to be the other way around lah. I'm just sad that uh, it happens that way lah for them, and they need to part ways and need to find clubs and everything. Mm-hmm. It was very hard time for them lah, and I know my 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 friend my goalkeeper Sharil uh, now is in Kedah. He had a very You know, before that, Pekin has very good year, and suddenly go to Perlis and everything. So, I'm just sad lah. I'm just sad. Uh, then, yeah, Alhamdulillah, is good. Now he's playing Keda. You know, uh, under Idil and I think he's doing well. I'm happy for him. Mm, mm. Happy for everyone. Uh, my friends in Malaysia that is doing well. Uh, and yeah, and, and like I mentioned, right? I mean, it was a blessing in disguise because 
uh, you joined Haugang and you went on to win the Player of the Year uh, in that pre- uh, Singapore Premier League season. Um, fantastic season with Haugang United. But I just want to move on now to the national team aspect of things, especially at the last uh, Suzuki Cup. I'm sure you know what what question is going to come. You had a good <laughs> tournament, uh, played very well in the tournament, uh, scored a goal as well. And then that semi-final. Uh, first and foremost, right, how was it like to be playing in that in that game where so much was going on with the sending off and whatnot, how 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 did it feel like? Oh, it was crazy, man! It was. Is that the craziest game you've played in? Uh one of the craziest game lah. Can mm. say lah. Uh, tough and all. You know the I don't know what's wrong with the referee <laughs> and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, everybody's talking about the referee yeah. and all that. But at the end of the day, I think. Uh, like we say, I think we as a team, we 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 can do better. We we really did well. We pushes each other and everything. So yeah, just just that unlucky moment, you know. Uh, I knew that. Uh, 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 before that, I knew that I had the confidence and everything. So it was all going smoothly and everything. So yeah, it's just you know, even Messi and Ronaldo missed the penalty. So you know, I can't blame myself. Uh, I said that I tried. You know, uh, I know at that moment I'm confident to take it, and you know I've I've took mm, all the penalties in ha- in Haugang, and before that in Chengganu, you know sometimes. So, yeah, so back with the Suzuki Cup, then it's just the moment that I believe in. If you score, you score. If you don't score, then you know you need to train and you know train, train, train until you score. So yeah, then. That moment came. Uh, I feel like after that, uh, I know everyone said that just forget about it. We have still the extra time to go and everything. But yeah, I know I can't. I will be lying to myself if I say that that thing was not still interrupting me lah. But I tried my best. Uh, during the extra time and I think the team really fought, fought like crazy and yeah. I think just unlucky that I think that first few minutes of extra time we it's a. Uh, it's a it's a goal right yeah, yeah, yeah. Indonesia scored then then that pulls us like really down lah but before that we were still fired up to really go even the penalty miss and all we still fired up to go yeah I, I think it's always easy on hindsight to say you know oh this player should have taken the yeah. penalty or that player should have taken the penalty but I think your record speaks for itself I mean you, you were the main penalty taker for your club teams before that mm-hmm. so there was a reason why he took the penalty. It's not like tikam tikam. Hey, if we got penalty, who want to take? Yeah, yeah, you go yeah. take. Yeah, you go take. No, there there is a science behind these methods, right? Uh, but after that penalty miss, uh, one of the clips that went viral was when Asnawi <laughs> came towards you and he uh, and he said something. What was it that he said? Uh, honestly, do you remember? Could you hear? Yeah, yeah, definitely, I can hear. But yeah, I was blank at that moment. Straight away, I was blank. Uh, you know the crowd, everything. So I was blank, and I just remember I was looking down, and I can hear him say that, uh, thank you, you know, thank you, uh, mas, thank you, mas, terima kasih, mas, or something. Then straight away I was like looking up. When I was looking up, Shadan was there to push him. Push away. him away. Yeah. Then from there, then I was like, eh, did he say that? Like, but you know, at that moment, I didn't like even think about that. Hard la. to react, lah. Yeah, yeah, of course, mm. of course. Then. Uh yeah, after that and everything, the viral thing all came on. But for me, you know how Indonesian fans is. You mm-hmm. know they are they are yes, you know Indonesian fans are being fans. You know we mm-hmm. can't do anything, but all fans are we can control nice, good everything. You know that's how football is. You know football is nothing without the fans. So yeah, I appreciate all the comments and uh, even good bad ones. You know, just uh you need to go through this as a footballer. Yeah, definitely. I think. Even the elite footballers, mm. few days after, uh, Mo Salah missed penalty. Mm, yeah. <laughs> then I was like, "Hey, Mo Salah missed." Then I was like, "Hey, okay." Then I was like, "You know that makes me want to like, hey, no man, even good players really, really miss penalty. So why not? I think you just need to try harder. You need to definitely. This is not the last penalty thing I'm gonna take. Yeah, mm. definitely I will be back and." Yeah, and now just going through this injury and everything. Just hopefully, I'm I will I want to enjoy football again and to look forward to a good season this year. Yeah. How hard was it though after um you know the tournament ended, um after your last kick being a, a penalty miss, how was it like to deal with like social media or do you or stay away from social media? You stay away from social media and like how important was family at the point of time to keep you away from, uh, the mentality of keep wow. thinking about it. Yeah, I think. 
uh, I'm just I'm just blessed with uh, good friends, families. You know, um, it was a very tough one week. It was a very very tough one week. Uh, yes, definitely you want to throw away your phone, don't want to see social media. But come on, uh, I will just see here and there, here and mm-hmm. there. But uh, with or without the social media, it does came back to me. It does haunt me. Um, uh, and I had a two week break after that. So that one week was not even a break lah. Um, it was quite tiring. It was quite mentally tiring for me. You know, even though your body justice you know i was having a good time with my family you know my son and everything playing but your body was so tired because you are just mentally tired of thinking about all these things that you know people you just yeah it's just you are just mentally drained and everything so yeah then i had one good friend about you know uh, my my good friend uh shafiq alit uh he's uh ableton trainer uh he you know he told me that you know this kind of thing he shares with me because he had He he have it last time, and you know he knows how to deal with it. I appreciate his advice, you know, uh, to be able to listen to him and all, you know, to calm me down. Mm. I'm I'm just happy he's there. My wife is there, you know. Everyone is there. My friends is there. It was a very hard one week, and I know this one week. I know that period, that one week, uh, is gonna like motivate me to do even better. I know, but it's just very hard to. Turn that thing to just be happy and you know enjoy the break. Hmm. So I'm just blessed that after that one week, there's another week. So that one at the end of the week is just all smiles and happy lah because I I I did a staycation with my wife and all everything. So yeah, then we came back to Lion City for preseason and yeah happy to you know see new faces and sailors and uh you know my f- uh my coach and everything. So even my coach, <laughs> we had a training. Mm. No, and we, after that we I think someone fouled in the penalty and it's the first penalty. <laughs> first thing Coach King asked me that, hey Faris take. Then I was like, huh? <laughs> then I said, like, usually I will I want to take, you know. But at that point, definitely in the preseason anyone can take, you know. Mm. Just have fun and all, games two side. So Coach King asked me to take. Then after that everyone was like cheering, oh, go go go. Then I said, like, oh, okay okay good oh, good take ah take. <laughs> then after that take. Alama, miss again. <laughs> oh, serious? I thought he was going to yeah. say, yeah, after no, the penalty is top corner. Yeah, yeah. man. They, it's a top corner, but on top of the post. <laughs> I was blasting, I was angry, I was blasting it. Then after that, uh, Haris like, said, like, hey, take in, take in. Then take in. Then I blast it again, and it scores. So mm. then, you know, nice. everyone said that, okay, Suzuki got finished. Then at that moment, you know, I know, I knew that Coach Kim tactic is to make me have my confidence back. I appreciate it, and From there onwards, I know my team have my back. Everyone have my back. So I had a very good preseason. Like I said, I think the one of the best preseason. Good setup from Nancy Sailors. Good preseason. Even though we don't go overseas to do some preseason stuff, and but the 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 thing that the progress, uh, you know, for individual players to be able to do, to do your weights and everything, it's all there. Mm. So I'm happy. Uh, you know, this club is going somewhere. Hope. To hear good news, greater news, uh, you know, to achieve greater heights with the club in the near future. Yep. Uh, for those, I think you have a last question before we yeah, move on I, to rapid fire. I do, cause yeah, you you mentioned you have like a good support system, right? So what I've noticed, like in the aftermath of the Suzuki Cup, is that the national team players, like you guys, really bonded, like even like through a comment section, like come on, you, you know, you know where I'm going with this. Like as now, we posted something. When he and he said something like to his fans to make a meme out of it, ah, yeah, then yeah. you see all the Singaporean boys just came back with comments and saying like, "Hey man, come on, sportsmanship, respect are important mm, yeah. things to value in football." And even Safwan posted something on his Instagram, right? So I don't know. You guys have a WhatsApp group where you guys like I don't know, talk about it and try to have each other's back all the time. Ah uh, no, I think it's just basically that I think Coach Tatsuma, you know, uh, shout out to him. I think he's he really gels up the team. That one month, you know, we are closer as ever as a team. I feel like you know, I know, I knew the boys inside, inside out, and all. We go to each other rooms, you know. We, we. I know it's COVID, but uh, we had the le- level to ourselves, mm. and we do treatment and all, you know. So yeah, definitely, I think, uh, we had good 
good times and that one month that overseas training and all it helps with the bonding and all so the preparation to the Zika was so good um yeah until until you can really feel it and this is how it, it felt like you see i think the asnawi posted the thing that i i honestly i don't know why he posted because <laughs> Yeah, it was it was quite some time yeah, already, yeah, yeah. and yeah, maybe he maybe his intention was good. Maybe mm. his intention was good. I don't know. Maybe lost in translation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's true. Yeah. Like you know, maybe some people, right? Like um, I don't know. Once they apologize, they think it's over and like, hey, let's laugh about it. Mm. But some people are not ready to laugh yeah. about Definitely, it. Definitely, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. There's a lot of uh ways to see. It. There's a lot mm. of views to you know to see this angle, but I think like for me, yeah, like you know, you just think good stuff about people mm, I think just, uh, just maybe think maybe as now yeah he's mm. still young you yeah, know yeah. Uh, he's a good player and uh, definitely I think he meant well maybe you you're not sure but the the way how like you see I think the fans um uh, my 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 teammates and all to just back me up uh, even me I don't I don't even know until they take me through that thing I don't even know until it goes viral and all viral and all mm. then. When I saw them, I say, "Why Safwan posted this?" Then I was like, "Eh." Then you know, came back to this. This is like I say, I think mm. trying to go off from the social media and all of that. So yeah, then I was like, "Ah, maybe he meant well. I don't know, but I just mm-hmm. you know, Safwan is good and everything." So then lastly, yeah lah, it is what it is. So for me, hope this thing dies down, which I think already did. Mm. Yeah, it's just that you know, we try to look forward to. To a new thing, new era, and Asian everything. Cup, man. Asian Cup qualifiers, yeah. man. Come on, quick one. Your your thoughts on our chance yeah, of progressing. Actually, uh, as an extension to that question, mm. right? I mean, you are at the age now, um, twenty nine, thirty, and, and a lot of uh, your teammates like Safwan, Harris, all all quite similar age. Do you almost feel like you're coming to that era where this group of players, talented group of players, that um, I'm referring to, Harris, Safwan, you, and all, right? That this is your one prime chance now to go on and make history in Singapore football because it could be a chance to get to our first ever Asian Cup. I mean, we we did host the Asian Cup before. That's why we win the tournament, but we've never qualified for uh, an Asian see. Cup. Do you almost feel like that passion and that desire will bring you guys through? Are you confident? Mm, for me, definitely yes. I think with what we've been through, um, with how the setup is in the SPL right now. You know how the the teams play. You know you can see in the, these three games, everyone is like every team is playing from the back and all. So it's good. You know, uh, it helps with the national team setup also. So now we just need to know who is the coach and all. So hopefully, you know, he can bring new things mm-hmm. to to the table for the national team and. Uh, at the same time, stick with uh, you know the the setup that we had. The philosophy, lah. Yeah, the mm. philosophy that we had. Um, yeah, I just hope that uh, the bunch of players that being called up now also is good. Um, uh, looking forward to you know, <laughs> I'm really looking looking forward to going coming back to the national team. Is just something that uh, I love to play with. You know, for your nation, everyone lo- uh love to play for your country. You know, uh, just need to be. Well prepared for this and Asian Cup, like you guys say, I think, eh, yeah, definitely, I'm confident that we can do something. It's just, like I say, just one, two things we need to set. Uh, you know, look forward to who's the coach and mm. see how everything progress from there, lah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, our last segment is of course the rapid fire round. Five quick questions. <laughs> uh, I'll start off with the first one. Uh, who has been your toughest opponent in your career? Toughest opponent. Asnawi, <laughs> Asnawi, really? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Why Asnawi? Um, he's young, he's fast, he's he's strong. Uh, uh, because uh, I I'm new. I'm I played against him. You know this one. Then not because of the rivalry, viral mm-hmm. shit or what. Mm-hmm. No, it's just really when I see him, like, hey, this guy is you know tough to beat mm. I played left. He played right back. You know, uh, it's really tough to beat. And if I beat him. Uh, I think I can. For me, like you know, eh, we will go to the uh other levels. Uh. Mm. I I will go to the next level. Uh. It's just that, uh, for me, it at that stage, you know, Suzuki Cup international stage. As now we, you know, the momentum we had, uh, during the Suzuki Cup, then we had our momentum. So yeah, uh, I think we I came in in the second second half. So, 
was good yeah, battle lah. Yeah, it was a good battle, mm. but at the end of the day, I think I I I would love to start and we see how we match, you know, mm-hmm. during the uh the 90 minutes. Hopefully, yeah. we get uh, a taste of that yes, soon. Yes, yes. Hopefully, uh, part two. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. The best, your best teammate. My best teammate. Um, uh, I think Zufami. Zufami, Zufami Arifin. Yeah, I think uh Zufami has been the player that uh always you know with me uh with Lion Shaw everything yeah we we might not seem close but in football uh i think uh you know we had that we had that friendship uh we we can talk uh we can we can laugh we can at least talk about anything actually yeah so uh yeah in football is so for me all right nice uh what has been your biggest regret in your career my biggest regret my biggest regret uh, to not to not uh accept the offer from PKNS the second year the second year mm. so yeah like i say it's a blessing this guys but you know it's a regret because i want to go to state and PKNS love me you know and they offered a very very good contract but you know uh money was not a matter at that point in time because i know how to go mm. i want to build myself up as a professional footballer so i went to para and things happen so there's the you know things you learn and all yeah okay. i regret that part okay next one uh next best thing in singapore football next best thing one young player mm. now who you think is going to be a great player for singapore in the future oh um Kairin Nadim. Kairin Nadim. Yes. Young, Quite recently young, someone yes. said the the same thing. Why Kairin Nadim? Um I've seen something special in him. Uh he reminds me of me a bit when I was younger but uh that was I think 2 years ago mm. or even 2 years ago. Then I didn't know what happened last year. Mm-hmm. Uh his name just died down or mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know what happened to him but He, he knows he knows himself that he is capable of going to greater heights he just need to set his mind set uh you know focus and if he really really focus the skills the talents that he had i saw on the pitch when i was i was training with him uh, because i i was in trenganu mm. covid mm. yeah so i trained uh, with, train with young lions yeah so i trained mm. with him and i saw his talent i saw his So and that year also I think he's the na- the name lah mm. the 2020 mm. yeah two years ago yeah mm. so I don't know what happened to him last year and hopefully he can you know focus and everything so this year hopefully he can have a spot and you know bring himself up yeah okay uh, last question is what is your wish for Singapore football wish for Singapore football I I hope in the near future um we can have good uh, national team set up you know young 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 boys coming up but before that you know talking about national team the SPL hopefully everything uh you know will go uh as it is right now like what Lions Tisilas is doing you know uh, some of the clubs is trying to you know follow and also i think more clubs to privatize they are trying to think about the league and everything so it's good for the younger generation i'm happy for it and i hope it happens it really happens the privatize everything uh in the league and all in the clubs so that uh by the time i think <laughs> i really going to retire <laughs> so i'm just happy to see mm. younger generations you know to have this kind of setup mm. you know to go to push themselves to go further and yeah you maybe you don't need to go to overseas you know you you can stay in singapore and make a uh, career yeah make yeah. career career out of it yeah Okay, That's fantastic, Faris. Uh, I expected this to be a good episode, and you've delivered. Uh, once again, uh, wishing you your best in your recovery from injury, and hope thank to see you, you soon in uh, the SPL. Thank you for having me, guys.